you better give the D11 a bit of a pat there, JD. So just a bit of encouragement for this morning. It can do it, can't it? Well, just to keep things in perspective, that's 46 ton and it's uh, got a lot of suction. It's like a anchor. Well, good afternoon guys to this lovely, lovely evening. Um, it's beautiful weather. Everything's nice weather wise. There's even a little waterfall going on over here in the background, but um, there has been some, some interesting times. We've got an excavator that is severely, severely bogged and on a lean and all sorts of things. So we're, um, yes, it's on one of these silt bars or silt banks. And uh, yeah, she just sunk, sunk down on one corner. So not real cool, but we do have the dozer here to pull it out. Um, so yeah, it's basically um, Brad and Robbo have been down here doing a bit of work here with the machines and um, Brad's been getting bogged in the dozer So yeah, every time Brad's involved something like this happens it seems. Is that right Brad? Just got my big D. <laughs> He's got the, it's probably couldn't see with the sun there, but there's a little little bit of water we've got to cross to get over here. So um, yeah, we've got all the recovery gear over there and um, yeah, got to get it over here, obviously. So, got the dozer there ready to pull, but first things first, we've got to get down to the pull point. Recovery point. So, Josiah's, Josiah's burrowed in there. Found you found it? Yeah, it's right there. Dug about a foot and, foot and a half down to get yeah. to it. So, that, uh, that'll be a start. And um, thankfully, it's all cleared out in front of it here. So, we'll um, just have to see how it all goes, really. But yes, haven't seen, I don't think we've bogged the excavator yet, have we? Is this the first time? And and the last possibly because we'll we're going to pull the keys out of the machines at this this place I think. <laughs> um, what we got we got two 20 ton lifting slings which is what we use for some of the, this bigger stuff. Well, the 20 ton lifting slings are yeah with our testing and that should be good for about 140 ton before they break. The dozer's only ever going to pull 100 ton, so they should be well and truly enough. We're not really using them as kinetic rope. We don't need to. Um, so yeah, they can just, you just take off steady with them and they seem to work really well. Um, we do have a big D there, but we don't want to, yeah, ideally we'd love to have like a massive soft shackle in the middle, but um, sometimes you can't get away from that. So we'll probably, yeah, try and minimize any potential issues there if something breaks or whatever. But um, yeah, I better start start helping hey, that was a good shot you're playing horseshoes <laughs> so Brad Brad's uh Brad's got a bit of kazaz taken out of him so we he's he, he might have been having a bit of a, a few emotional moments um, but yeah <laughs> when you spend too much time in mud it does that to you I think anyway we'll uh See if we can get this out. Guys, I think the isolator of the excavator has turned itself off in the mud, so we can't get down to it. So hopefully we can just move it enough to maybe, maybe get it. But she's dead weight. It's gonna 
going to be a struggle. Any movement? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Well, let's hope there's a nice hand sized gap on the other side of it. Well, we've been digging the isolator out. I think the isolator might actually be broken, but hopefully we can get it to light up here. I've just got the ignition on. We'll see. Brad's fiddling with it. You reckon it's broken? Push it in, push the handle. Is it just the lid there or where is it? Yeah, there's two yeah. rubber oh, latches, isn't it? Yeah. What you're doing was good. Right, oh, well, we got dug around the battery box to get to the battery box so to get to the back of the isolator and I just bridged that out um, and we've got it running so at least it's not going to be dead weight now we're just going to reassess on the straps just to make sure we don't have a um, yeah see if we can put another one somewhere to mitigate if one snaps anything happening so that's the plan right well now with the excavator running it should be able to help so we're just going to give it a give it a try. We want the big mama, eh? Right, we'll get the 350 ton strap. Update time. We moved it, what, three metres? Two? Maybe a couple metres. Um, and pushing. Yeah, yeah, I was behind it pushing, you mightn't have seen it. <laughs> um, but yeah, these tw one of the 20 ton lifting straps that we used, which yeah. braking strain should be about 140 ton, um, it did let go, but uh, more than likely at the ends where you got the D, it's quite a small, it was, how big was the D up this end? That's uh, 30, oh, that one, 25 rated. Yeah, so that, that it's had like a, yeah, like 100 and... I don't know. If you work out the safety factor, it was a it's a fairly big D, but it is still a pinch point for the um, yeah for the sling. So it um, it obviously let go. But the beauty of these over your normal kinetic straps is that there isn't as much build up of um, kinetic energy that then propels whatever's hooked up to it in the direction that you don't want. So um, yeah. So now what we've got is the big. 50 ton sling which is the braking strain has to withstand 350 ton so definitely definitely not going to break that one um then we've got another 20 ton which is new the other one that broke was a bit old hey, Matt. and um yeah Think yes phil a big problem what the problem we have now is the escalator is about to tip over and uh we just broke a strap 
and we've got no no energy left. Have you got any more? Oh, I'm, I've been saving it so I can film. Oh, yeah. I, I, I shouldn't have said that. Way too much <laughs> <energy> in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so we're yeah. still just working away here, trying to. We've got to get back to the D because when it came up, it obviously pushed a heap of dirt up to where the pull point is so we're digging out that again and i'm gonna to have to jump uh, bridge out the isolator again to get this going so we'll uh keep keep going you going around the other side to show me how deep it is uh no Has that got a torch? I've, no but i got my little torch here so i can get to the isolator at least so that's a that's a big old hole down there Wowzers. It's not overly cool. Anyway, we'll keep you updated. Well, we got Phil in his hole down there. He's Josiah started and Phil finished it off. Did he? He start. Oh yeah, no, he did start. So he's down there. Yeah, being a rabbit down there and. We've got the D up here, about to come back down. So Phil's doing some upside down acrobatics there. But we've got this side. How long can you, how can, how long can you last with the head uh, to the bottom and your, and your blood running down? I think you'll, should be, you'll be right for a few minutes. Um, but yeah, we're doubling it up down this end so that we don't have to do this again if something does happen. So with it doubled up here, it shouldn't break down here like it did last time. So. Yes, fun and games. That's the one underneath. That's the one underneath. Well guys, uh, I think we're calling it a night. Um, after that last one broke it. For some reason it broke um, back underneath where the D is on the excavator, even though it had been doubled up. Um, thankfully the dozer still has more to give, but we just keep snapping these, these slings, which should be oodles. So we're just not quite sure exactly what's going on, whether the, they're pinching on the D or rubbing on the dirt or something's happening that's compromising them. Anyway, we've got to somehow work out another way uh, and get more straps, come back. I may actually not be here, but hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully everyone's in a... I mean, spirits are okay, but it is a bit frustrating. It's, um, yeah, a lot of work, a lot of damage to machines, but, um, yeah, hopefully in the morning um, these guys will be able to get her out. We'll just hang tight, see how we go. Well, good morning guys, we're uh, rocked up at the site here. Well, let's, let's hope we can get it out today. Got a nice stream of water going between the dozer and the excavator. Brad and Josiah are there enjoying their morning tea before the action starts. And I've got some uh, slings. Thanks to Agraway in Moree, we uh, they are able to Get us out of a jam, hopefully, and we got another two big D's. So, give it a try. I reckon we'll double these 20 ton lifting slings, that way they'll be 280 ton breaking strain. And then we got that 50 ton lifting sling over there, which is 350 ton breaking strain. Anyway, take two. So yeah, we'll get up into the D11 and Start her up and back 
back up so we can join up the straps. hope we can get her out today we got a little bit more energy this morning we we're a little bit defeated last night but we uh didn't get a lot of sleep last night either to be honest we trying to get out of our head the uh excavator bit early for a morning swim jd she's a, she's a tag cold that water well we have mud mud wrestles together <laughs> <laughs> Go around the butt dark side here. Oh yeah, she hasn't got any better. Ha hasn't magically popped out overnight. Uh, had time to s the water to settle. So yeah, that's oh oh it just went down. That's how soupy it is. Anyway, it's, uh, that's how far we got last night. So the counterbalance was just here. It's over there. So she's on a fair old angle. Tell you what, I could get used to this videoing. I think I know why Matt likes it. Don't even have dirty hands this morning. We tell everyone else what they should be doing. Just whip over there, JD, and just manhandle that D, please. You better give the D11 a bit of a pat there, JD, so just a bit of encouragement for this morning. It can do it, can't it? I can do it. Well, just to keep things in perspective, that's 46 ton, and it's uh, got a lot of suction. It's like a anchor, so I think she'd be about a hundred ton pull. So it yeah, gets equivalent to a um, nearly equivalent to a D9 stuck. I've got a new motorbike to pick up the Savo, so we've got to get this thing out. Got some riding to do. I just, I, I just messaged a mate a photo down in Victoria and he said, I think we're both going to have rough days. He's got a thousand tonne of barley that he can't get out of a silo. Yeah, right. So, yeah, he's in a bit of a, a spot too. Commiserations uh, together. Yeah. Oh, well, but look how good the scenery is, eh? We've we got a nice bit of running water between us. Yep. We, um... Probably good, good spot, spot for, for camping. Camp, yeah. yeah, good weather for it. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad we got the D11 on that because I think we'll need every bit of it. We got the big, big D down in here now. We better have our prayer time. Yeah, let's have prayer of thanks. So we're gonna give it a temp first attempt for the morning got a little bit more confidence in the straps and the d's today so hopefully we can get her out first go i'm just gonna try and just crawl along i'm not trying to pop it out real quick because brad can have time to react and try and crawl crawl out with me in the excavator so we'll use the torque converter and we'll uh use all 100 tonne of the dozer. Anyway, I'll hand it over to JD and he'll take the footage.
little bit relieved. Very. That come out very easy actually with, with the right straps. We didn't get too much angle, just a bit more rough. But yeah, it looked pretty good from the um, dozer anyway. <laughs> I was trying to get the front out, you know, pop it up, which it did, so. Now uh, there was some weird angles going on, but it, um, I, the dozer was probably 50%. Yeah, right. So. So, D8 didn't do it. No. No, she took some pulling, but. Oh, now we got to get out of that slop heap. His job is going to be to wash the excavator and clean it all up. Do you reckon we delegate Matt? Because he's not here today? Uh, he's got a sore elbow. Oh, right. Yeah, or, or is it the stingray bite on his um, leg that he had 10 years ago? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's like the other issue. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, today you've got the elbow that's <laughs> Well, he's in the grasshopper today, so <laughs> no, no yeah. doubt we'll hear, hear a bit more of that. Don't, don't bag him out too hard. Yeah. Him. He'll have done the job before he sees this video anyway. <laughs> we've unhooked the big D at the excavator end and we'll just drag it all through the water so we don't have to manhandle it through the water. Fun begins. Clean up time. Getting it all cleaned up and back in the shed, all this recovery gear. Hey, now you're here, right, just to pack up all that and give it a wash while I'll go and show all the viewers the big hole. Yeah. Matt, Matt's not here to do it, so someone has to. <laughs> oh. You have no idea how good that feels to get that thing out. It, that's a big hole. I think if I went down there, I'd um, sink too. I'll just show you for perspective if, if I don't get stuck. Oh, the slop. So this is where the track was sitting, where I am. And that's, that's head height there. And that's with my arm reached right up. That's how deep it was in. We're not coming back to this spot anyway. We don't get paid enough to do that. Brad's going in the right direction. He's going towards the gate. Yeah, that's a good idea that. I reckon, I reckon we um, take it straight to the gate and take the keys out of it. So yeah, we're just at the excavator now with it on dry land. And uh, we just got the job of bypassing the isolator here on the side because it got busted when it was in the mud. So just to give you a perspective, JD, he's uh, what, two foot tall? No, <laughs> five, five, uh, five and a half foot tall, something like that, 1.7 meters and the mud was up there so you put your hand up there and so you can not quite touch where how deep that hole was so that gives you perspective because in the hole it looks like a 10 ton excavator yeah we managed to get the door open 
Not a heap of mud in there, so that's good. <laughs> Just all around and on top. <laughs>